On paper, or in this case, on my whiteboard, a season total of 77 inches of snow isn't really that interesting for us in western New York. But like I do, I dug a little bit deeper into the data, and I compared this past winter to some recent climate trends. It turns out, it's a little bit more interesting than even I was expecting. Let's dig in in this week's Heather's Weather Wise. A couple of years ago, I started building a huge data set on different parts of western New York winters. Everything from season snowfall totals, to how long Lake Erie was staying frozen, to how many days we actually had snow on the ground. Now, most of those data sets go all the way back to 1968, so that's 53 years worth of data. Pretty big data set. I won't bore you with all of the details, but there are a few trends that I want to point out to you. First, our winters are indeed getting warmer. According to Climate Central, winter is New York's fastest warming season. It makes sense then that Buffalo's average annual snowfall is decreasing. If it's not as cold, it's possible that more precipitation is just falling as rain. It also makes sense then that the length of time between our first measurable snowfall for the season and the last measurable snowfall is decreasing. Now, that's also due in part to the fact that there's been a recent trend for November snowfall decreasing overall. The city of Buffalo is also experiencing fewer days with at least six inches of snow on the ground. Sad news for winter sports lovers. Those are the five trends I found. Now let's see how this past winter fits in, or maybe doesn't. First, the temperatures. November, December, January, and March were all overwhelmingly warmer than normal. February was a rare, cooler than normal month, the first since May of 2020. So the winter warming trend certainly holds for this past season, and obviously that decreasing annual snowfall total holds as well. When it comes to the length of the measurable snowfall season, you gotta be a little bit careful. Last week's big, anomalously late snowfall can make it look like our snow season was actually really long, but remember, March had almost no snow at all. But December, January, and February all had above normal snowfall. That means November and March, kind of the outer wings of the main snow season, really fell behind. Evidence that the right conditions for consistent early and late season snow may be slipping away. November came up about seven inches short when it came to monthly average snowfall, once again fitting that trend that I found with decreasing November snowfall for the last 50 or so years. But even with all of that, a warming winter, less annual snowfall, a shorter snow season, less early season snow, this past winter was actually pretty good for the ski bums and the snowmobilers. And that's because that last trend I mentioned, the one with six inches of snow on the ground, that actually didn't work out this year. That trend was the number of days with at least six inches of snow on the ground. For the past 50 years, it's been going down. The average shows that we've gone from about 35 such days in 1968 to just 19 days within the last few years. Winter 2020 through 2021 brought us 25 of those days, and most of them were consecutive. That's the most number of six inch snowpack days we've had since the 2014-2015 season. And uh, you remember what that season was, right? Now I've learned in my four winters here that you never call winter over. The atmosphere always has a few tricks up its sleeve, but I can say whether you're looking at climate trends or the winter season forecast, when it comes to May, the odds of actually getting impactful snowfall are pretty low. That's it for this week's Heather's Weather Wise. I'll see you next week with a new topic, but until then, remember it's good to be a geek.